Dixon Bands, SKT versus TSM. And there's the band, of course. Banning out Dyrus seems to kind of be the order of business, but there's a band thrown at Marin. Team Solomon has to be careful here. They already see the Cyan band, so they must either expect Maokai to be a band or a first pick for Marin, who's of course a fantastic Maokai player himself. Yeah, he's something like 13 and 1 on Maokai right now. Decides to ban the way, but they should expect this to happen. So by banning out top lanes themselves, you might end up in that situation where Dyrus also runs out of a few picks. Kalista has to be the last band for Team Solomon now. And interestingly, SK Telecom, so they are going to go with the same bands that we saw against TSM by Fnatic earlier today. Those are the three champions that Dyrus played over the course of the NALCS playoffs. And will Team Solomid try and leave Kalista open until SKT? Either you take the Nars as a first pick or you take the Kalista. We take the other one on our side. Because in terms of jungle here, there's both Rek'Sai and Nuno for Bengi. You take Kalista, and then you like, take Hecarim in response. Oh, so. I agree. SKT should take the Kalista pick, but listen, what TSM is trying to do is say, you make that trade, because whichever top laner you don't get, or whichever pick of Nar and Kalista, we will grab the other one. That's at least what oh, I'm expecting. First Kalista has to go in for Wild Turtle in this situation, then. Oh, huh, okay, so we got the first pick okay. of SKT. Drag That's Hecarim risky, man. For Team Solo mid, yeah, it certainly is. Then, then again, go with that Rek side, though. Then again, we normally don't see Fega play Urgot. No. So, so they might keep this yeah. one and say, okay, we know this is going to go to the AD carry position and we get the Kalista now from Team Solomon. However, Urgot. even though we don't see Faker play Urgot, it wouldn't surprise me at all to see him play it in this particular tournament. When he goes to international events, he frequently pulls something new out of his bag of tricks. One of the problems if you do run Urgot mid lane and a tank top is you have a lot of physical damage. It would mean we have to see Corky coming in for Bang as an AD carry then to provide some magic damage. And we're going to see if they do lock in Nar, at least Team Solomid will say, okay, if it's going to be Urgot mid lane, Corgi would be the expected AD carry for them. But TSM here clearly very happy with this start. They got Hecarim for Darius and, of course, Antoine and Gragas, where he can be very effective in the early game. The problem with playing Hecarim into Urgot is if you play Urgot properly, it's nearly impossible to get a good teleport flank off because he will just get swapped out the instant that he tries to hit your team from the side, right. and he'll lose all of his speed and all of his damage. We've oh. seen SKT handle Hecarim really well yeah. in the past. Hecarim is also one of these champions who rely on being able to, like, one-shot an AD carry. You won't do that against an Urgot building a frozen heart, having that shield as well. So he's able yeah. to stay alive against the Hecarim, meaning there's going to be less targets for Dyrus to one-shot. But I like the way this pick and man base has been going. At first, with SKT that's taking Urgot first pick, Team Solomid knowing, okay, we don't have to pick Kalista then in first rotation. That was pretty smart from them. And this lane, Kalista Thresh, is just so strong all overall. The fantastic gang pressure having that lane 2v2. Late game as well, when you can throw in that Thresh here. You just have so many ways of playing around with these two champions. It's also worth noting that Bengi is up until this point professionally undefeated on Rek'Sai. 5-0 record so far. So it's been a very effective pick for him. Looks like it will be Kalista Thresh locked in for TSM, a pretty devastating bot lane for Wild Turtle and Lustboy. And what are the final two picks going to be for SK Telecom? Hovering over that Alistar right now, and we've seen SK do, SKT do this in the past, pulling back, just playing ultra, ultra tanky, yeah. and it's worked really well for them so far in Korea. And we often see Urgot Alistar as a lane. It does tell me we will get a different mid lane pick for Fager, not the Urgot for him. Yeah, Obviously need some AP. Azir and Cassiopeia will be the two obvious ones. Right. For Fager, he did show Azir already today. Cassiopeia. Goes for it himself. Obviously a blind pick for him, and what can Bjergsen pick into it in this situation? This is really kind of ideal for him, you know, being able to pick whatever you want that you think will work best against Fager's Cassiopeia. Yeah, I quite like Azir into Cassiopeia as, as a lane matchup if Bjergsen wants to play it. Obviously very, 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 very skill focused in there, but I will give right. the edge to Azir because of the, heat, the fact he can outrange the Cassiopeia. And he has that all-in potential with the ulti as well. You gotta be careful though, because you know Faker's gonna run that Ignite. He doesn't know that Cleanse is a summoner spell, I'm pretty sure. Very true. Well, he will be the target though in team fights. I mean, you're not gonna die oh, yeah. to Urgot if you're the Hecarim. It's gonna be straight at Faker every single time. That's another thing to keep the Hecarim from coming in though, you know? That's very true. That's very, very true. So Zix. I might see him take that a little bit safer. I've been playing quite a. This is 
Honestly, a very, very yep. good pick into Cassiopeia. What I like about Ziggs in this matchup, or against Cassiopeia, is the fact that Ziggs offers so much zone control with the minefield, with the satchel. And obviously, Cassiopeia is a fairly low-range mage who has to get close, be constantly be able to spam her Twin Fang. You can stop that in teamfights if you have proper minefields and satchels from the Ziggs here. And the, basically, also, the backline threat you do have with your ulti, making it very tough for Faker to position, position himself, because he's going to be the guy Dyrus is going to jump towards. The ulti from Bjergsen is going to fly there. You might even see Lost by being thrown in the face as well to try and take him down and oh, start definitely. the fight. One thing that I'm looking at right now is Dyrus is opting to go for the Ignite on the Hecarim here. And I almost feel that if you can get that exhaust or the uh, the smite down onto the Cassiopeia, you may have a better shot here considering that there's one major damage threat on this team. It seems a bit dangerous too, you know, for having no flash, no way to really escape things. And we've seen a lot of yeah. other league players liking to spend their summers at Camp Dyrus, so <laughs> we'll see if that continues. I'm normally a, a very big fan of Ignite Hecarim because I feel like you can do a lot more in the early game and in, in terms of mid game. However, in this case, Smite would have been super, super yeah. effective for himself. Also in terms of the late game scaling on Hecarim with that Cinder Hole. And if we're going to see the lane swap as well. now. Uh, TSM probably won't be looking to lane swap here. I don't think we'll see a lane swap simply because I don't like Urgot in lane swaps and I, I see very, very few teams ever up to do that. Normally when they run like Alistar or Urgot together, they just sit and farm, get the tier on Urgot, then they start being a bit of a bully, and then they take standard lanes instead of swapping the Urgot around. All right, and of course, tweet at us who you think is going to win. Hashtag SKT win or hashtag TSM win. It is time, guys, to get into the game. Welcome to Summoner's Rift. SK Telecom T1 versus Team Solo Mid, our final game here in day one of the Mid-Season Invitational. Yeah, and as keep talking about the two top laners, Martin, Martin and Dyrus here. Obviously, Nar has a pretty good laning phase against the Hecarim, and there, for this one little thing you can do with the Hecarim, you just start Flask, no potions, you do a camp at level one, and then you go back to base and you buy a cloth armor. That's gonna help you a lot in the early stages of this lane. You will also get that level two, and you can go pretty aggressive and trade with your Ignite. It's something a lot of Western Hecarim players like to do. Very cool, can also TP right back to lane if he wants to. Meanwhile, a fairly safe level one from both sides here. Yeah, it looks like a pretty standard fan. Iris taking a look at the Krugs up on the top side. Hey, man, for these teams, there are no standard fans. <laughs> the best, right? <laughs> All right, they don't agree, apparently. <laughs> I tried. <laughs> oh, Binky, a little bit interesting position on the side, but it doesn't look like we're going to see anything too, too interesting. Out of this level one, no one grouping up, and Wild Turtle and Lust Boy looking to take that Gromp and start pushing in very aggressively early on with the Callista. Yeah, Callista into Urgot is a pretty good lane for Callista herself. Not one where she will necessarily completely destroy the Urgot, but the fact that if you get a few spears down, you can take some very easy trades and you can dodge around that E of the Urgot fairly easily with your jumps as well. So Turtle and Lost Boy definitely looking to play aggressive in the lane. And I like the fact that pick a strong 2v2 lane because we just talked about this before we even went into champs, like how control of the bottom side of the map is so important for both teams. SKT wants to control so they can create picks around it and take a dragon for it. And Team Soulmate obviously wants it because they never really seem to gank for Dyrus himself and they want to stop SKT from getting these early dragons and roll towards number five, which is a thing they've used so often in Korea to win games. Very yeah. true. Bang and Wolf going to have to play back right here after the Gromp is taken by Team Soulmate. Faker and Bjergsen wow. playing pretty aggressively. And, you know, as we saw earlier today from the Bashik uh, Tush game. Faker plays pretty much at one speed, and that is extremely aggressive in lane. It does make him vulnerable to ganks, but got a lane swap coming, and it does sometimes get a little bit harder. Yeah, well, level two. Gotten a little bit earlier for TSM here, and we'll see if they can press that advantage. Look at Dyrus. Boots. Oh, boots. Okay. After. I think cloth oh. armor is so much better against Gnar in the lane, just to have a bit more sustain that way through the armor. The boots itself doesn't really offer him a whole lot. I mean, he is obviously Hecarim, so he does get a bit of extra damage from it. And maybe he's just looking to try and close the gap on the Nar. But the problem is he's going to get Boomerang every single time he tries to go forward. Yeah. And Marin is just going to try and kite him anyway. 
And pushing so far up in lane two without any sort of escape summoners makes him a little bit vulnerable as Bengi may demonstrate right now coming through. Dyrus already low. There's a knockup. Dyrus in big trouble. First blood goes to SKT. Bengi, he was a bit too far up, wasn't he? So if we take a look at the pathing right there, starting on the red buff, going right for the blue buff after taking the Raptor. So he was a little bit fast right there, mm. but even so, Dyrus caught a little bit unaware and you have to be you have to be so considerate about that gank path as you push up to the turret yeah but Marin gets him right where he wants him well, Marin baiting really well too even got the ignite out of Dyrus kind of in a little bit of desperation too and we didn't get to see the early start in this lane between Dyrus and, and, and Marin but typically on Hecarim you don't want to push the wave because obviously you're not running a flash yeah and Rex has so many ways of getting over certain walls to gank you uh -oh. Bengi might try another one in the mid lane let me talk about that before here or after no this flash one. though yeah that's yeah. true he's gonna take the rafters as he kind of mulls it over but typically again for, for the Hecarim top what you want to do is you run to the Gnar outside of the minion wave and you start trading you don't push the minion wave yourself you just you're gonna be happy that now he's gonna try and auto take trade with you and push the wave back instead, and you just sit fairly safe. Oh boy. Now he might die a second time because oh Bengi is not spotted. He's gonna come around. Oh, Dyrus. Dyrus going in on the Marin. Now he tries to. Oh no, he's not fleeing yet. Just waiting for oh, some poke. Man. He wants some poke from the Nar first yep. so they can take down Dyrus because he's obviously not gonna right. move away from the minions. And they and want that rage off. bar. Coming in. Dyrus in a little bit of trouble. Look at Faker Faker's moving up. fleeing. Faker, they're trying to cut him off. Dyrus running into the enemy jungle. He's deep behind enemy lines now. And I don't know, I don't think this is going to end well for Hecarim. Looks like he's trying to get to the turret to maybe get an execute, but nope, no chance there. Just going to run right yeah. back in, and we're off to the races. Hecarim, he's going to win like a one-man horse race, but in the end, he's still going to get taken out by SKT. There is two kills. Whoa! Thanks, Grunt, bro. <laughs> And right there, again, if you look at the setup on that, they had a ward that had been placed by, uh, but been placed by Bengi. Oh, right at the Raptor, but they're we've got... Die. Smash in the bot lane. Nice grab onto Wolf. Wolf taking a little bit of damage, but that pulverize looks like it'll keep him safe. Yeah, getting low, but not getting killed. I really want to talk about that because the setup was so good. There was no way for Bjergsen to help in that top side yet. Faker had the angle onto the top side of his lane. They had a ward right there, and Santorin has not been playing the top side of this map at all since he started off at his Krugs. There's no counter ganking for Dyrus as he's coming forward. There's, he's not in the lane brushes oh, in order to make a play. This is awkward. Bengi a little bit lower health, but now taking a big chunk out of Santorin. He's getting hit by the Raptors as well, but Santorin not wanting to stick around there finding it a bit too dangerous as he gets chased back to his side of the map. And as much as we can talk about Centaurin and not helping Dyrus, he's been misplaying the lane itself mm. by pushing it twice now and being caught out from it. I mean, that's not how you can play this matchup when you don't have a flash. Oh. And you know the enemy team likes oh, to Oh, Bjergsen tried Faker. to pop that up, but Faker flashes out of it. Escapes there, but Bjergsen with a little bit of a win in lane. Yeah, has to burn both summoners to get yeah. out of that as well. Oh, Faker playing aggressively. Dyrus oh, now Dyrus. trying revenge. to get in. Revenge of the Dyrus. Faker, can he get away? No more summoners. Now taking a lot of damage. Good bait. Good bait from Dyrus. Yeah. Coming in, seeing, right. okay, I'm going to be caught on the tower. Nope, just going to turn around and obviously just get an ulti away from Faker here. So I'm yeah. trying to clear out the wave. So Bjergsen, some very effective trading. We yeah. mentioned how the Zix into Casio is a fairly decent matchup. Not too much for the laning phase, but more how it's going to end up in team fights with Bjergsen gonna try and really zone out Faker with Minefield, minefield and, and Satchel. And then have that, obviously his ulti and the long range bounce from his Q to try and get onto this oh Cassiopeia with some damage. And, and the fan vote going pretty heavily in TSM's favor right now. I'm curious what Marin is going to, to do here. Looks like he's not gonna go for the fastest home guard boots available to him, but Marin, a player known for going early home guards on this NAR, and we saw it so many times in the finals up against the GE Tigers because they really know how to manage rage and make some plays. Yeah, speaking of making plays, Lust Boy coming down here. Doesn't look like they will be able to catch people. No, he's going to bring Santorin in on the Lantern, but it may be a little bit too late already. We'll see if maybe Wild Turtle throws him in with the ult. Nope, no chance there. There's no ults yet. Oh, yeah, you're right. No ults yet. Oh, there's, well. there's a very low chance that that gank, I think, works, especially with how conservatively Bang and Wolf have been playing this, considering that they went for, of course, that tier first. You have to wait to stack that up. Well, that's what threw me off, man. I mean, because that kind of gank, you really kind of need some ults for that. Oh, oh they're gonna Bang, He's going to find Santorin right before the Dragon Pit. Looks like he's going to try to get over the wall. Not going to work, though. Oh, Chilling Smite, Santorin in a lot of trouble here. Lust oh! oh! Headbutting him back out of the 
lantern. Wow. Twice, man. First, Beggy moves in front of the body slam to stop yeah. from getting over the wall. And then Wolf just follow Lost Boy off that here. Sick. Headbutt him back. Well, and even then, Bengi had another oh, tunnel. They're going out a wild, wild turtle. turtle. Bengi there as well, too. Lost Boy in trouble in the back lines. Wild Turtle pulls in Lost Boy. There's a knock up. Dyrus comes in. Exhausts immediately on top of him. But Bang in trouble. There's a kill, though, for Wolf, though. A big melee in the bot lane. Wild Turtle still getting lower. Bengi, though, under threat. They'll get another kill. Dyrus manages to take down Wolf, but it looks like Marin and Wolf will be able to actually maybe finish off. Will they? Looks like Bang did, went down. Wolf knocks him away. No, they have. Dyrus is angry. Henry, he's smashing. He's coming back. Oh, man. A lot of action here in the end. A uh, one for two, I believe. And from TSM. Right there, the big problem was that SKT didn't have their ults available to them yet at the start of that fight. So they couldn't yeah. really make too many plays right there. They got a bit over aggressive. And let's take a look at this one again. This so awesome we talked about how SKT likes to have these early ping walls around the mid lane as well. Here's one of them spotting Centaurin. That's why those know they can take this fight. And look at Wolf. Lands on for Centaurin, just headbutts him back in. <laughs> You're not going anywhere gets the kill for himself and then sets up another play in the bottom lane. Wow, are they going to spot Bengi with that ward? Now it's all about Dragon. And what we didn't mention too was Faker actually was getting chunked out of the mid lane during that entire process. Ah. So he's actually falling relatively far behind Bjergsen in terms of farm at the moment. It's getting a little bit risky for SKT here. It is so hard when you just want to move forward and spam Twin Fangs on this Jordal in the <laughs> mid lane and then there's a minefield under you. Yeah. And it looks like Marin is going for the home guards into the mallet build. So they're going to try yeah. and extend the laning phase right here. Kind of sad we didn't get to talk about this before because the fight broke up with this. Some of you see quite a lot from someone like Koro from EDG in this Hecarim Nar matchup. And also Marin pulling it out. Oh, it's simply super good at the one on one. Santorin coming in. Nice flash play. There's a box. Bang. Man just to get out. It looks like Wolf may be in trouble. Meanwhile, action in the mid lane. Bjergsen in a lot of trouble. Faker gets the kill with the Twin Fangs. Meanwhile, down in bot lane. Looks like Wolf and Bang were able to escape successfully. So SKT managing to get a kill in mid finally. Look around this mid lane here. Oh, let's talk about oh, Alto, there's more action. Again. Look at that, bang! Knocked back out from under turret. Getting low position reversal gives him a little extra tankiness. Is it enough? The dive still so Baker's powerful. Coming. Bang is still there. Here comes Bangy too. Bang is still alive. Cliss has a kill again. Bangy gets the kill on the Lust Boy. Meanwhile, Santorin forced away. I can't believe Bang is still alive. You know who's not gonna be though? Wild Turtle, goodbye. A double kill for Bangy. And Faker claims another victim. Santorin goes down in the jungle. Everything is going wrong for Team Solomid at the moment. That gang in the mid lane first. SKT has so many wards set up around Faker here. He can play aggressive. There was nothing to spot Bengi coming in as well. And that was a losing matchup at first for Faker. And then the bottom lane. Bang staying alive. Can't Obviously, you roam from the mid lane after Ziggs is already dead. You get Dragon, first Dragon by SKT. Monty, you love your stat with it. <laughs> Such a good situation now for them. Yeah, if we take a look at this too, Bang gets knocked out, but immediately position reverses. Santorin has no more mana here. Wolf gets the exact right headbutt in this situation. They'll lantern him back in, but he has that shield that he's going to pull back up, and Bengi coming in at the right time as well. Turtle doesn't actually manage to get the lantern. He stays too long on the other side Man. and gets separated from his team. He got too greedy for that kill yeah. on Bang. We're probably going to jump right into uh, Bengi and Fago anyway. Yeah. Ended up dying for himself. I didn't get to see when he used the rent, but clearly didn't get the kill on Bang when he did. So I'm not sure if he just tried to pop a little bit too early and therefore lacked the damage for it. Or we're expecting to get the reset at first. Oh, and then go for the second one as a Torin. Getting harassed more in the jungle, gonna take the lantern out. Man, I gotta say, you know, people were calling Wolf the weak link on this team coming into this event, but he has not been that this game. And now, really, the problem for Team Solomid is. At first, they were trying to make a few plays on the bottom side. They got a kill with Dyrus coming in. That backfired completely. So now SKT in every single lane has gained some sort of advantage, except for maybe if you look at the two AD carries, but then everyone else has just yeah. gotten the kills. And because Marin is Whoa, building Frozen oh, Mallet, Aginar. and he's going to be just one-on-one against Dyrus over and over, Dyrus won't be able to touch him because of the Frozen Mallet. Now, this Frozen Mallet, it has to be said, isn't the best for early game team fights. We see uh, Baker. Baker getting chased into his own jungle. Here comes Wolf. Wolf from behind. He's got to be careful. He doesn't get caught here. Going to go on to Santorin. Anyway, this is Paul Lost Boy headbutted into the red buff pit now. Faker 
Oh boy. Bluffs boy in a little bit of trouble. Drops that box, but I don't think it's going to save him. Just trying to delay to get the rest of his team involved. Faker still gets that kill on a rampage now. Bengi comes in, chilling smite onto Wild Turtle. Kalista in a lot of trouble. Headbutt pulverized onto Wild Turtle, and he'll get taken out. Bengi manages to pick up another kill. He was such a hero in SKT's match against CJ in the semifinals. Really making plays here today as well. And I mean, really, SKT just pretty much comprehensively outplaying TSM across the map at this point. Nearly a yeah. kill a minute for SK Telecom in this game. Ooh, pretty wild. And this is, the, the problem too, is that we're talking about two tier champions. We're talking about Cassiopeia stacking the tier, the Urgot stacking the tier, Marin building the Frozen Mallet first. The longer this laning phase goes, these are not fights that they should be winning right now. Yeah. They are in a power trough. Once those tiers come online, it is going to be a very bad situation for Team Solo Mid. Well, Lost Boy trying to defend that bot lane turret as well as he can. It's still so much pressure from SKT. Bengi just doing a little bit of farming as well. And man, Wolf, I am just like in love with his Alistar play in this game. <laughs> it has been so good. So Dyrus going after this Trinity Force as well. It's going to take a long time to get there. Yeah, and the problem for Dyrus in this lane is going to be the fact that because Marin is building for the one-on-one -on -one and not for the team fight himself, because obviously Frozen Mal is not the most gold efficient item in, in a team fight, he's going to be able to kite oh, the Hecarim around yeah. nearly all the time. So the impact Dyrus will have well, has to come from teleports where he needs to dive Faker oh, and man. just kill him with this Trinity Force. That's the only thing he will be able to do at this point in the game. And the scary thing about that frozen mallet oh. onto a Gnar, so we see Bengi. Oh, Dyrus gets caught by his Krugs. Marin comes in, he's got the red buff as well. That's two red buff champions. Dyrus in a lot of trouble. Ults away, will he make it? Looks like they'll let him go for now. Oh, or not, Santorin comes in, forces a flash out of Bengi. And it looks like, unless Santorin can catch up, they may have to leave it at that. They've got the ult from Bjergsen to maybe help take this one. Bengi, though, on the run. Dyrus is going to teleport TP. back in. They're going to try to make a play here. He catches Marin and Bengi. Bengi goes down immediately. And Dyrus, he wants another one. A lot of damage onto Marin, but he becomes Meganar just in time. And I think he's going to keep going. Yeah, you don't want to get dove under turret with that. Alt comes in, looks like, just to clear that wave by turret so Faker can't do any more damage to it. All right, so well played here from Team Solo Mate. They get the kill and they defend the mid lane at the same time. Bjergsen returning to lane. Dyrus proxy farming a bit, though, and that's going to prompt a teleport from Marin. And here come will. the home guards. And the hit. frozen mallet is completed. He's still got that red buff, too. Wow, flashing over the wall. Void Meanwhile, Rexlai gets behind him. Faker coming in as well. Dyrus in big trouble. Marin may just go ahead and give this one over to Faker. We'll see. Marin, nope, takes it for himself. You can't proxy farm in that situation I when Faker has pressure on the mid lane and the teleport is up. And the Void Rush is up as well. There's too many ways to get collapsed on in that situation. Extremely unsafe move. Especially, like you're saying, with that Frozen Mallet finish and the red buff still on Mar, and there's almost no way you escape from that. No, that's really been a problem for Dyrus. Oh. He's been playing very, very aggressive and very greedy, honestly, in this lane phase from the start. Yeah. I'm feel... getting in the lane level two, pushing it instantly, and just getting ganked. It just seems like there's this desperation from his play right now that doesn't need to be there. I agree. Oh. Tiers are going to be fully stacked soon, and yep. that means they will be. Both yeah. physically and metaphorically. <laughs> <laughs> well, Santorin manages to spot that ward, so they'll get a little bit of vision back in their own jungle. The next dragon is up in about 40 seconds now. Yeah, let's look at here what's going to happen. So SKT next objective for them is obviously the dragon. They keep having these pink wards on the bottom side in the river. SKT has been controlling that nearly all game long. Team Soulmate has not been able to do anything, and every time they walked into that river, they would get caught out and simply end up dying for it. So next dragon is a fairly easy setup for SKT. They have timed the recalls. Nash, Nash just gone back to base. Bang gets a bot tower for himself and mid tower, so they get so much extra gold as well. And this entire map is now open to even get the deep wards in around the blue buff of Team Soulmate, yeah. and you can just set it up perfectly. There's no TP for Dyrus, so he's out of this fight, and he's the only guy who can kill anyone in the back line of SKT at this point. Rest of Team Solomon is looking more to like kite backwards with the Ziggs, try and control where Faker is moving, zone him out and poke him a little bit, and then maybe you turn around and go for kill if someone drops low. But as long as there's full vision control, that's never gonna happen. Yep. 
Looks like another dragon again. And meanwhile, Dyrus continues to get harassed by Marin. In a little bit of trouble, Dyrus trying to escape. There's the Nar ult. Another easy solo kill for Marin as Santorin comes to mourn the body of his favorite horse. That horse was amazing. It was, and so is the Frozen Mallet. Yeah. Against the horse. It's uh, pretty good. <laughs> Always ch chasing him down, like, over and over. So it doesn't even matter if you set yourself behind in terms of your tanky items for, for team fights, because you can just keep being a bully in the one-on-one. Uh -oh. right now, last point. We just talked about how whenever they show the river from Team yeah. Dolomit, they get caught out. Yeah, pretty much. And then they get pulled in. Yep. Wild Turtle. Saving his support there. They're still going for this they one, can. though. Let's Wild Turtle. Is still really far. He's gonna try and recall. He's oh, gonna get. Oh, oh, wrong part of the brush. Oh, he canceled his recall. Saw Bengi coming in. In big trouble now, doing a lot of damage to Bang, though. Bengi manages to make something happen. Position reverser, and he gets out on the lantern. But there's Wolf right there, getting a bit bloodthirsty. Bang gets the kill anyway. And now Lust Boy with that exhaust on him is in a lot of trouble. SKT getting another easy kill. It's thir it's 15 to 3 now. Bjergsen finally able to get the first turn of the game for TSM, but things are still really looking grim. I'm surprised to see TSM playing so recklessly in this game. They've been overextending time and time again. It's not characteristic of their play. Yeah. And when, we, when I think about TSM coming oh into boy. this, is Bjergsen gets fouled oh by Marin. And Marin knew exactly where he went to, and Bjergsen's still in a lot of trouble. Tries to enlist some help from the Wolves, but they're not coming that far, man. They live in that little den. Another kill for Marin. And Dyrus continuing to try to take that top turret. Looks like he might be able to now, but... TSM has been such a methodical team over yeah. the course of the NALCS playoffs, and the risks that they're taking in this one are just getting punished oh, left and right. Iris. Well, we know how this one's going to end up. Marin gets another one. He's now 6-0-1 on this NAR, and you're right, I mean, about TSM. They've been so good, so methodical, all spring split, and in this game right now, I feel like the nerves are getting to him a little bit. Yeah, Marin's yeah. going to start a glue factory soon. I think he's, he's got enough dead horses, it's true. Thank you coming in. And so, more pressure from SK Telecom. Yeah, I mean, at this point, Marin is just going to keep Spade pushing. It's kind of clean up from here on out, huh? All game long. Well, it's like the team solo mid. In order for them to come back in this game here, they got to try and have a situation where Darius can sit in the one-on-one -on -one lane with Marin and just sit there, not fight or anything. Just sit under his tier two tower, Go back to base when they want to force a fight around, let's say, a dragon if you are team a bit. Get that home guard engaged, and then you need to rely on Bjergsen being able to land poke. He's going loot and Zeko to maximize his poke damage as well. That's the only way for Team Solomid to start winning fights. But it's going to be very, very hard. The problem with relying on that home guard engage is the fact that there's an Urgot. And yeah. Yeah. when the home guard engage comes in, all Bang has to do is press R and click on Hecarim, and he loses all of that speed, all of that burst, and then he gets put in the front line, and there's no longer any kind of flank. And even it's a you, very powerful pick against Hecarim. And even if you don't have home guards, you're going to have an Alistar who's going to get CDR, who can just headbutt you away as well and completely stop the same thing from yep. happening oh, from boy, Diary. He turns around immediately onto TSM. Look at that nice head but pulverized Santorin trying to help his teammates escape. Lust Boy pulled over the wall by Wild Turtle, but SKT continues to chase. Wolf, can he get there in time? Bengi, they caught Wild Turtle. There's the position reverser, and there's a dead AD carry. And SK Telecom, oh, nice flash pulverized onto Bjergsen. He's in big trouble now as Bang comes in with a big damage. The ult does nearly nothing as Bang picks up the double kill. Lust Boy trying to get back to the base, but Bengi says, no way. I'm coming in there with you, Santorin. Just hanging out right now. Checking out the Rek'Sai, waiting for that tunnel cooldown. There we go. Back out again. And that is much happier music than I think Santorin would really choose to listen to right now if he could. And if uh, one hammer works for you on an R, why not get a second one? Yeah, man. The Page Mario Brothers have shown for him as well. And Wild Turtle deciding to go Hurricane is a thing that this is well, there's this like a lot versus you, tanks. You, you can't do this in this situation because in order to actually effectively use the Hurricane, you have to hit more than one target. And if he's hitting more than one target, he's going to get Cassiopeia ulted, pulverized, uh, position reversed, or Nar ulted. Yep. It's also the fact that you have a build now where you don't run any crit. And you're going to have to be able to take down some tanks in, if you want to break through the front line of SK Telecom without any crit. 
you're gonna need like 20, 25 spears on a target, and that might not even do enough before you get like the third item of a last whisper. So you just don't have any single target damage from the side of the Kalista at this point. Well, let's take a look at this fight one more time. I mean, TSM just on the defensive from second one on this one. Yeah, and Marin just teleporting into that fight as well. Wild Turtle caught trying to take the lantern right there by the position reverser. There's the flash pulverized from Wolf, just zoning out in front of Bjergsen right now. Bang, able no just to damage. pretty much solo Ziggs right there as the rest of the team follows up. Bengi with the flash over the wall into the knockup through the base gate. Yep. And it's just so clear to see the game plan for SK Telecom and the way they like to play around the bottom side of the map. Typically, in terms of, again, the warding, they've used it so well to punish Team Solomit every single time something happened in the early game. And then with the early ganks on Dyrus, who was overextending, Marin just got so far ahead on this Gnar that he could get that Frozen Mallow fairly early and use it just so SK Telecom would say, we're going to win top lane no matter what at this point because we got Frozen Mallow completed, we have a good head start from our Gnar, so we just focus everything bottom side. And there was just too much for TSM to handle. Well, SK Telecom just moving around the map now, taking down turrets. The next dragon is live, and you know they took a very easy Baron as well. Faker just going and soloing the dragon. That's number three now. SKT with total map control. And I gotta say, I, I'm a bit surprised that this one ended up being so one-sided. Yeah, I will admit, I was expecting uh, a more defensive approach for Team Flamid, also with the yeah. way they wanted to control their own vision. Like, have very defensive warding, trying to spot if any roams were happening for SKT, and then try and play a fairly slow laning phase where you would expect, okay, we know Dyrus often gets camped, so we try and play around that one. This also, really you had the Ziggs, so you can slowly just sit and chip away the mid lane. Here we go. Dyrus okay, trying yes. for a flank from behind. Here's the He's flank, yeah. Onto Faker. Faker takes a lot of damage, actually. Gets very low. Nice lane That's from Lost Boy. Can he do it? Wolf coming in for the pulverized Lost Boy in a lot of trouble. They do get Faker, but now Marin comes over the wall. There's a Flash trying to take out the support. Meanwhile, Dyrus on the run as well. Bang took a lot of damage from the turret. Oh, Bjergsen took him out with the ult, but SKD still, even without their carries, is doing enough damage. They're tanky enough. The Double kill for Bengi, and SK Telecom just unstoppable at this point. Four kills, only Bjergsen making it out. It was a really good call by TSM, though, yeah. in the situation. Oh, there's the ace. It's the only call you can make. And yeah. had it been even they gold, that team fight could have been won by them by getting such a good engage. Oh, but they would have crushed it. They took the fight where Bang wasn't there to, to just stuff the flank immediately from the Hecarim. So they were actually were able to get onto Faker in that instance and take him out early. I think TSM had the right idea. Oh, yeah. It's just, unfortunately, they're a bit, a lot too far behind. A bit a lot. It's, it's true. Well, with an engage like that, I mean, that was pretty much the perfect engage for TSM. And, you know, we even had Bang coming in and pretty much dying to the turret in there, too. Well, double Brutalizer for Bang now. All right, well, I mean, the more limbs you have, the more Brutalizers you can hold, right? <laughs> well, that'll... It's a lore That'll build. help. It's a lore build. Once he gets Ghost Blade, but... That's, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's true. A bit unorthodox right there from Bang. Why not? Wild Turtle is going to try to pick up his red buff here. Wolf may want to uh, try to prevent that. Cowboy Alistar is disturbing, by the way. Are we supposed to believe he's, like, hurting his own species? Like, <laughs> arming his fellow cows? That is a disturbing skin right there. Freaky. He's babysitting. <laughs> I guess so. He's the bull. Got to babysit all the cows. <laughs> The less said about this, the better. <laughs> All right, love to Mikhail's pick up for, uh, for the cow. Now we're talking about him. Yep. That's basically the only way Figure's going to die is if he gets locked down, then Mikhail's is going to prevent that from happening. Uh, Bengi gets spotted in the jungle here. We'll see if they make anything happen. Wild Turtle forced to retreat into his own jungle. He's going to run right into Gnar, though, isn't he? Yep, there's Marin right there, and Wild Turtle Trying to hop backwards. He's got that red buff. He's going to take it on the lander. Oh, Marin chasing deep gets hit with that death sentence, though. Needs to be careful. He's so tanky, though. And again, this build from uh, Kalista just doesn't do a ton of damage. Very unfair situation also for Wild Turtle, being as T Team Solomit is so far behind. Yeah. Obviously, I mean, as an AD carry right here, you feel what you very, very useless against so many tanks. Yeah, look at Bang. For himself. Jeez. He will have a little bit of extra wave clear with the Hurricane, but that's about it for him, honestly. And you already have the Zig, so that shouldn't be your priority right? for, for Team Solomid. Bjergsen with the loot and Zeko, obviously, just trying to maximize whatever damage he can get from that Q 
If he does and a full rotation of yeah, spells. Man. Coming in, there's That's an Aqua find a wolf, looks like they caught him. Bengi coming in, wolf still very, very tanky. Tyrus ults, he does manage to connect with Faker, but now he's on his own with Faker. I don't think you want to be there. Meanwhile, the rest of SKT has invaded the base. Tyrus still running from Faker, looks like he might escape. Will the poison be enough? Meanwhile, Lust Boy goes down in the mid lane. And Marin still putting all that pressure on the bot. And will Faker actually find Dyrus? I think he will. Oh, no. Dyrus actually made it out. Faker actually opting not to use Ghost on that chase right there. A little yeah. bit weird. He definitely could have caught him sh if he had wanted to use his summoner, but instead holds onto that one for a little bit longer. Ziggsult still clearing out these <laughs> waves. So SK Telecom hasn't actually really cracked this base yet, but they will on this one. Well, yeah, there goes the inhibitor turret right now, and it looks like the inhibitor is pretty vulnerable at this point. They're going to back off just playing it safe. Bengi coming in. One of his tunnels basically right at TSM's front door, but dragging up in a minute 30, bearing up in a minute. SK Telecom, this is the time for them to pull back, play it methodically. You don't want to give any chances to TSM at this point. Yeah. Just wait for Baron to respawn. Right. Play around it once again. You had such a good pink ward set up before near it, and then you oh. warded off the jungle of Team Solomon. Now chilling Smite onto Dyrus. They're going to try to slow him down. Marin about to go Meganar as well, too. Not a lot of members of TSM there. Lust Boy could come in to help with the Lantern. Nope, everybody from TSM coming down to support that. But again, it's just chunking people out. It's just keeping them back and trying to help keep control of the map to easily go back and take a Baron or a Dragon a little bit yep. later. Always keep every single minion wave pushed up. Yep. So you know that there's three lanes they have to defend. If they ever show without a teleport, without a global, well, then you just go straight for this Baron, which is spawning in 10 seconds for, from SKT's side. And I mean, worst case almost for SKT is that Team Flamet try and go out and stop it, and then you just get an open fight, which is also what you want, because you want to get the Ziggs away from these towers so right. he doesn't just sit and wave clear. So there's barely any win-win situation, except Ziggs ulti, stealing Baron, Calling it right now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You call it to Fischio. I'm holding you to this. Oh, Marin coming in. You don't expect them to come from your own base, do you? Bengi in a little bit of trouble, or Bjergsen rather. Marin, look at how tanky is, just kind of 1v4ing at this point. Bjergsen getting so low out of the fight already. Marin still chasing. He's about to go Meganar. Bjergsen dodges the building, and Marin ults in <laughs> for the kill. Bang comes in. There's just nothing that TSM can do against SK Telecom. There goes the inhibitor and SKT. They want to try to get the win here. Will they be able to do it without one carry on TSM? Looks like it might be easy. There goes the first Nexus turret. TSM, perhaps a desperation fight, or will they just let the base go down? Dyrus trying to swing around the outside here, but second Nexus turret gets taken down. Now the Nexus being taken out as well, and SK Telecom with a dominating victory over Team Solo Mid, GG. And this was really the playstyle SK Telecom has used back in Korea so effectively. Yeah, same exact game plan. Complete control of the bottom side map from the get-go of this game here. Marin gets a good start in his own laning phase, starts winning one-on-one, -on -one, plays super aggressive on the NAR, and you just focus the other four members. Whenever teams from it try to make a play, they would always be spotted at first, and there would always be a response yeah. from SKT. And uh, that's what's scary about them, too. Uh, they've been kind of pioneers in this post Cinder Hulk world in terms of their picks and bans. And this isn't all they have to offer, either. Of course, they do like these very tanky Urgot compositions with a Cassiopeia or a Vladimir in mid. But they also play that Lulu and play around Bang as the primary yeah. carry. And, yep. we, and we did see a few changes. I mean, pick up Bang wise here. Urgot came in as the first pick. So Team Flamet decided not to bank the list, even though it's been such a must ban against Bang so many times simply just to say there are plenty of like power picks at the moment. Whichever you don't get, we're going to take two of them. So they got Hecarim, they got Gragas, they could save the Callista because they were expected Bang to play the Urgot. So I quite like the way they handled the pick and ban phase. It was just once again the execution that simply didn't work for them. Yeah, and they, they have looked a little bit off all day. Like I said, we know TSM looks so calculated over their course of the NALCS playoffs, and we weren't really seeing that team today, which, which surprises me quite a bit, actually. And so I hope that tomorrow they can turn it around, because the reality is that TSM right now, uh, with a couple losses already, yeah. is, uh, I mean, they, they have to win one they more. They have to beat HQ, yeah, they, otherwise you're out of top four. That's true. It's pretty crazy. I mean, that is not the TSM we're used yeah. to seeing. We'll see what they can bring back tomorrow for uh, more information, for more analysis on that desk. Let's send it back to the desk of analysis itself. See what they have to say.